Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. What are they? Well, Henry's right. These happen to be benchmark bars. I'm benchmarking my internet connection compared to other people's internet connections. Of course, I could also run benchmarks against the speed of my processor uh, compared to other processors throughout the world and history, for that matter. Do the same thing with RAM. I could benchmark just about anything that has some level of measurement ascribed uh, to it. And that's the question. What is a benchmark? It's a system of measurement. Now, in terms of software and hardware, as far as users are concerned, uh, benchmarking something would uh, say, all right, here's the level of performance of your whatever, and here's the level of performance of someone else's whatever, and someone else's, and someone else's. And by looking at these benchmarks, or scores, as they are agreed upon, these standards, uh, you can see where you happen to sit for whatever it is that you're trying to measure against. So in this case, I was measuring my internet speed. I was getting a benchmark of my internet speed compared to uh, someone else's. So I happen to have a cable modem connection through Comcast, and I was benchmarking it against a DSL connection of a similar or roughly similar speed on Quest. And, and depending on what it is I'm measuring, I can find out if I'm better off going this way or another way. Uh, and in many ways, people use benchmarks to better judge not only what they have but maybe what they want to upgrade to when new hardware is released you often see on a handful of enthusiast sites measurements or benchmarks to to let their users know or their visitors know exactly what's going on with this new piece of hardware or in some cases new piece of software and the two really go hand in hand uh, in some cases software is specifically optimized for certain kind of hardware and in some cases vice versa uh, and so benchmarks uh, have been seen as a way that you could better judge whether or not something is going to be for you. So let's say a new video card comes out, should you rush out and get it? Well, maybe it may not be as much faster as they think it is or uh, they tell you it is, especially after be after running these benchmarks. You can see, well, I've got this video card and the new video card is really not that much faster and it costs $800, forget it. You know, I don't, I don't need to spend the money on that. So that's a good use of a benchmark and how you can do research when it comes to purchasing new products. Again, whether it's hardware or software. Because these things are constantly evolving. Just because the benchmark for one version of software is at this point one year, it may be at a different point another year. Same thing with the internet. In many cases, same way with hardware. So many optimizations are constantly going on throughout the year uh, that you almost have to check your scores, if you will, on a regular basis. Well, if you're into the decision-making process or if you're just interested in finding out what else is out there to see if you've got the fastest system on the block or internet connection for that matter, anything that can be measured. Now some people say that uh, benchmarks are, well, rigged, and in some cases they might be. The software that's performing the benchmark may favor one platform over another, may favor one driver over another, may favor one thing over another. So it's good for you, if you're doing any kind of benchmark, on your computer specifically to try a variety of benchmarks, try a variety of software, and then take the average. Get a gut feel for, you know, does this feel faster? Does this look faster? Does it say it's faster across the board? Do research across the board to see if you are making the right decision either with what you've got and if you need to upgrade or when you go to purchase something new. As far as benchmark software on the desktop's concerned, I've been using SciSoft Sandra for, well, geez, years. I also use Eversoft's Ultimate Edition, another great benchmarking suite, because uh, both of them will benchmark just about everything inside your computer from hard drives to memory, internet connections, uh, processors. Uh, SciSoft Sandra, I know, also benchmarks or shows you how your power management performance is doing compared to other power management uh, places or places, listen to me. Uh, I'm doing this way too late at night. Uh, other power management systems might be running. Uh, benchmarks are, for the most part, a good thing. Don't take any one of them as gospel truth uh, because, again, it's going to vary from platform to platform, hardware to hardware, software to software. There's so many variables at play, but benchmarking, for the most part, will give you a good idea about where you sit with whatever it is that you're trying to measure. Now, I mentioned a couple of my favorite benchmarking tools. If you've got one that I didn't happen to mention, by all means, uh, you know, suggest a way. Uh, PC Wizard, someone just recommended. That's good to know. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, definitely, uh, it's, it's, 
it's fun for me to do. I don't do as much benchmarking as I used to, uh, quite honestly, because I think we've almost hit, in some cases, a law of diminishing returns for a lot of what we find on the Windows platform. That's, I think, changing somewhat with Windows Vista. And by the way, operating system plays a, a big part in how benchmarks are received as well. Uh, I could benchmark uh, on the same hardware running the same software I get a different benchmark on XP than I might in Vista. In some cases, Vista's benchmarks are worse than XP's. In some cases. Certainly not in every case. So anyway, uh, I don't, what do you think about benchmarks? Are they really worth running or is it just a bunch of hoo-ha? Let me know. Leave a comment, remark, follow-up, suggestions, link, whatever. We'll take whatever you got. Throw it at us. Benchmark us. We'll see, uh, see how fast you can comment and be the first person to comment. That We'll benchmark that. How many seconds it took you to be the first comment when this is actually posted. I can't believe I just said that. Or, of course, you're welcome to swing by the chat room anytime, day or night, uh, 24 hours a day. And, of course, if I'm not awake or if I'm not here physically present at this desk or in front of the computer, uh, other people certainly are in there. They've been really helpful. I mean, I, I've gotten to the point where I, I really rarely kind of go to the search engines to look for something. I'll just throw it out to the chat room, and they have an answer before I even have a chance to type anything in. So they're very helpful, and hopefully you'll be able to join us and be a helpful part of the community at large, this global community of people helping people through YouTube or, you know, again, through our chat room, which can be found at one place as people have been pasting in the URL or typing it in, live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.